First, I'd like to share, you know, we, when, we, when we study the Bible, <clears throat> whether it's Romans um, or any other book, we should always have study, study the Bible with, with a view uh, of God's eternal purpose. So that should be our vision, you know, when we study the Bible. You know, what is God's eternal purpose? We need to have this in view. So let's read um, Genesis 126 together. <clears throat> So I think uh, many of us are familiar with this verse, but I think uh, we need to focus. Let's just focus on these two words, right? Image and dominion, okay? You know, God's eternal purpose um, can, be, can, can be summarized, you know, by these two words, image and dominion, right? Um, so image, you know, man was created, uh, you know, in God's image. <clears throat> and this is so that man would express God. You know, just as a glove uh, is made in the image of a hand to express the hand, right? So man was made in God's image that man might express God in his attributes, okay? But also tonight, uh, my burden is mainly, though, on this matter of dominion. You know, God's desire is that man would exercise dominion so that God can establish his kingdom on the earth. God wants to carry out his will on the earth. But Satan is actively opposing the carrying out of God's will. So God needs a vessel, a corporate vessel, through whom he can carry out his will on the earth. Okay? So, so this, in a nutshell, you could say is God's eternal purpose. And as we know, so we realize that God's desire is not just to have many um, individual believers, even spiritual believers. Rather, his desire is that we as believers will be built together to be the body of Christ. All right? It is this body that will express Christ and also exercise his authority. And also in, the, in, these, in chapters 12 through 16, um, we see that the body of Christ <clears throat> has a certain expression, a certain living on the earth. And that's what we call, you could call, we call that the practical church life. Okay? So the practical church life is just the expression or living of the body of Christ, which is, which is described in Romans 12 through 16. So let's read uh, Romans 14, 17 together, which is under Roman numeral 3, okay? Dominion, the kingdom, life. So read, let's read 14, 17 together. <clears throat> So here we see what the kingdom of God is and also the characteristics of God's kingdom. And here I'd like to share, you know, when we speak of the kingdom of God, what are we talking about? When we speak of kingdom, okay, we're talking about a realm in which God, okay, in which God exercises his, his authority. You got that? So it has to do with God's government and God's ruling. As believers, you know, we've been born of God. And our birthright is, is uh, you know, our goal, our destiny is to reign with Christ. But whether we can reign with Christ depends on our exercise and, our, and, and training in this age. You know? So it takes a certain exercise. So we'll see that a little more tonight. But anyway, the emphasis here on the kingdom is a matter of our exercise and our living under God's rule. Okay? Point is that in order for us to exercise God's authority, God's dominion, first of all, we need to be those who are under God's authority, okay? This is a clear principle in the Bible. And, um, and there's, this, there's, this, there's an account, and I appreciate William pointing this out to me, in Matthew 8 about the uh, centurion who asked the Lord, asked Jesus to heal his servant. And there, if you read the account, it's quite interesting. The centurion says, you know, he's asking the Lord, you know, just speak a word and my servant will be healed. And he said, for I also am a man under authority. It's quite interesting. In other words, he recognized that the Lord Jesus as a man, he was a man who was under authority. And because he was under God's authority, then he had the authority. He had God's authority to heal, right? So there's a principle here, right? In order for us to exercise God's authority over Satan, 
First of all, we need to be, we need to submit ourselves to God's authority, okay? And uh, as, I was con- as I was considering this matter, um, you know, this matter of being under the Lord's rule, first of all, it's not an outward, uh, and the Lord's not ruling us outwardly, you know? But his ruling, his ruling is, is within us, you know, in this age. And his ruling is according to the sense of life within, okay? And as I was considering this matter, you know, really this matter of being subject to the Lord, being subdued by the Lord, it really touches upon, you know, all the areas of our human life. I mean, you, you know, just trying to come up with some examples, but really, if you think about it, it really touches upon all many areas in our daily life in terms of our submitting or listening to the Lord. Illustration is, well, maybe, maybe we're, we're on the phone, you know, we're looking at something or reading something, but maybe inwardly we have the sense, you know, maybe that's enough, you know. Maybe we don't need to read that extra article or that extra, I don't know, post, whatever it is. You know, maybe we should spend some time in the Word. I don't know. But that's a matter of the Lord, you know, the Lord ruling in us, giving us that sense, you know. And, and the question is, how do we respond, you know?